You're listening to The Business Marketing Show, episode number 93. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Hi, this is Ed K. Smith from The Business Marketing Show. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to have on the show our very, very special guest, Ken McCarthy. Now, Ken McCarthy is well known for many, many things. Uh, Probably one of the um, most famous things Ken's known for is establishing the first internet conference back in 1994 in San Francisco. And uh, he had the keynote speaker there, Mark Andreessen from Netscape, uh, involved with that as well. And Ken's also really well known for the system seminar, which has been responsible for many cutting edge uh, information and learning uh, seminars that has produced a lot of well-known internet marketing people over the years. And uh, I was fortunate enough to attend uh, one of those back in 2007. So... I wanted to have Ken on the show to have a catch up because there's uh, the he's celebrating his 25th anniversary of uh, being on the internet and and working on the internet and uh, also he's having a reunion for system seminar um, graduates who have gone through the, the workshop. So welcome, Ken. How are you? I'm well, thank you. It's great to have you on the show. So, uh, I can't believe it has been 11 years uh, since mm-hmm. I was in Chicago for the 2007 system seminar. Uh, but so you've got coming up at the anniversary, well, it's not really the anniversary, but it's a reunion of, so- of sorts for, for past alumni of the system seminar. So that's, uh, that's a pretty exciting thing to have happen. So um, now you're based in what part of the U.S.? I live in the Northeast in New York State, mm-hmm. and to place us, I'm 100 miles, exactly 100 miles due north of New York City Hall, right up the Hudson River, and towns that people might recognize were across the river from Woodstock, uh, we're south of Albany, which is the, the state capital, mm-hmm. and we're in the countryside, we're in the countryside. Fan- fantastic, and you're near a river, I remember for some reason, you've mentioned before that you're near a, a major river. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the Great Hudson River, uh, which goes from, it basically cuts straight down from uh, the mountains, the Adirondack Mountains, straight down to New York City Harbor. Yes, where the plane famously landed in. Uh, so <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Scully. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of history on this river. A lot of amazing oh, history. Um, it, was, it, was, it was probably the, the most important strategic asset during our, our Revolutionary War, because uh, you know this was in the era before uh, highways. So yeah, if you yeah. really if you were going to move, if you were going to move troops and and munitions and cannons and all that, you really the only way to do it was on the river. So whoever controlled the Hudson River pretty much controls the Northeast. So that's why we have our West Point, which is our military academy, is on is on the Hudson River. All these two hundred and fifty plus years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ironically, uh, Amazon dot com uh, now controls a huge portion, <laughs> a huge portion of the uh, internet uh, e commerce traffic as well. Uh, so yeah, that's I right. Think, no, no coincidence in the naming of uh, the business after the world's largest river. Uh, so yeah. yeah, okay, so. And again, the fascinating thing with the the whole uh, online and internet is I'm in Perth and 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 you're in New York State and you know we're having this conversation uh, twelve hours difference. It's eleven o'clock ish in in your your time and uh, a.m. and eleven p.m. down in my t- time in Perth. So, but uh, the internet and technology makes everything possible. So yep. now. The history going back, because I, I think it's fascinating. And I'm looking back, and for those uh, who would like to go and watch a video of Ken running that 1994 internet conference in San Francisco, it's fortunately been recorded for posterity's sake on on the, the internet. It's on on Ken's channel, 
So I will put a link in the show notes to that. But what was it that actually got you to put on that conference? What was it? What was the, the spark, the motivation to run it? That's a really good question. Uh, I'll have to remember because <laughs> <laughs> it was 25 years ago. Actually, it was 24 years ago. Um, yeah, I gave my first talk on online marketing in 93. Interestingly enough, at a Dan Kennedy event. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to be speaking 25 years later at, at an event of his in Chicago. Wow. Uh, well, I was, a direct, I was a direct mailer. So that meant that whenever I wanted – well, I, I liked the idea of targeting – uh, individuals, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, using running ads to draw people in and then getting them to, you know, opt in. Of course, we didn't have opt ins in those days, but people yeah. would leave their name and address and then we'd mail them. But we had the only way to, to contact them was either by telephone, which was a lot of labor or by mail, which was a lot of money because you have to you know, print and someone's got to, you got to pay someone to stuff those envelopes and you have to pay the postage. So it wasn't unusual for me to write a five-figure check just to send out what today we would send out in an email for free. Yes. Um, so two things about that. One, you develop tremendous discipline <laughs> because you don't leave things when you're when you're writing a five-figure check just to let your folks know that you've got something for sale. Um, you don't do it casually. You really think through everything, and I, I, I feel that was one of the great advantages I always had uh, in any market that I, in any internet market that I went into, I just had a greater sense of crossing the T's and dotting the I's and really working things out in, in really great detail. Something that you can't really develop if you're just a write email, press send guy. You just, you just, where, you, how are you going to get the discipline? Um, so, mm. so was doing a lot of direct mail and when I discovered a thing called email, which happened in 93, yeah. I thought to myself, wow, what if 10% of my customers someday were to get email addresses? I would be able to contact that 10% of my market for free. And, you know, when you're writing a five-figure check for to send a message to your customers, the idea of being able to shave 10% off that is very appealing. I mean, that's a mortgage payment, you know, or, or, a, mm. you know, a, 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 you know, a fantastic weekend in, in some fa fabulous city. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, Armani suit, you know? So yeah. I thought, wow, if just, if just 10% of my customers would get on this email thing, think of the money I'd save. Right. So <laughs> I, um, I, not being a technical person then, and not really being a technical person now, um, I said, well, I got to learn this. I got to figure this out. I got to get going with this. And surprisingly, my colleagues in direct marketing were not interested at all. In fact, they were so disinterested that I ended up being the first person to write an article on email marketing for the DM News, uh, Direct Marketing News, which is a, 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 a tabloid that used to come out every week in the direct marketing industry. Nobody else really wanted to even address it. So um, that's what got me started. And then I was at a demo. It was, I'm going to say, August of 1993, which was about eight months after the Netscape, not Netscape, uh, what did they call it back in those days? Mosaic. Mosaic, the yeah, first yeah. web Mosaic. Yeah. And I won't say it's the, it wasn't the first web browser because there were other ones floating around, but the first one that really got traction mm. was Mosaic. And it was launched, I believe, in January of 93 uh, or late, late 92. And in August of 93, it showed up in San Francisco, or at least it showed up to me in San Francisco. And I saw a demo of it and I was just, I was floored. I couldn't Same believe here. it. Yeah, I remember it very like, clearly myself too. I remember this. Yeah, it was it was a light bulb moment for me. Yeah, nobody had to explain it to me, like how important this would be. And again, it was the same sort of thing. I was saying to myself, well, if ten percent <laughs> of yeah. my customers decided they liked to do this thing, um, what an amazing thing! Because now not only can I mail to them for free, I can give them a, you know, you fill in the blank sales letter number of pages for free. Uh, and I already, even though I'm not a technical person, I, for some reason I have a talent for seeing what's coming next. And 
maybe it's because I know so little. I don't, I don't understand how hard things are. Um, <laughs> so when I, you know, I, under, I, I understood this basic thing that all things on the computers is digital. So it's zero, it's zeros and ones, right? So I thought in 94, well, audio is zeros and ones. Video is zeros and ones. We're going to have audio on this thing and video on this thing. And so I hired a guy named Hank Duderstadt, who was the head of the San Francisco um, uh, Digital Video what are they, what are they, Special Interest Group, SIG. That's, I don't know. If, if someone's been around the computer world for a long time, they've probably heard of things called SIGs. Yeah, and a special, in fact, I, yeah, and what that was, you know, computers were so relatively new and all this digital media. But remember, there were not CDs out yet. I mean, actually, excuse me, I take that back. CDs were still new, new enough to be exciting. And, um, you know, Hank was a very smart guy and he was really into video and he was the go-to guy in San Francisco for digital video. video. So I said, hey, Hank, you know, I had a newspaper, I had a little newspaper called the Internet Gazette. It was really, I, it was a strange and ironic thing. It was, a, it was an eight-page tabloid. It was printed on newsprint. Uh, I pr published it occasionally. We would do 25,000 copies. We would deliver it to all the internet hotspots of the time in San Francisco. And inter San Francisco was really an internet city. You know, it was the Definitely, first real yeah. internet wired city, you know? So there were uh, cyber cafes and just, just places where people would go and conferences and so on. So we would print this thing up and then distribute it. So I asked Hank, I said, Hank, write me an article on video on the internet. This is 1994. And he said, what? <laughs> Are you crazy? It's not possible. I go, but, but, but hey, couldn't it be possible? I mean, it's just digits and it's just zeros and ones. He said, oh, no, no, no. The, the, the bandwidth required for that would be incon in, in, inconceivable. <laughs> I said, well, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Just, just humor me and write it anyway. So we have an issue of the Internet Gazette. The front page was split between two stories. One was the coming world of Internet video. This was published in 1994. Yeah, yeah. I was a little early. Didn't come for another 11 years. And then the other side, the right side of the paper, was the music industry is dead, long live music. And it was basically what I thought was obviously going to happen. Once you could digitize music, which we were already doing with CDs, mm. you should be able to download it. And once yeah. you can download music, all that record store stuff is going to disappear, which is, which is pretty much what happened. So I guess, one, I was a direct marketer, and two, I'm a... I'm a passionate historian and the history that I've always been interested in is the history of technology even though I'm not technical um, I've always been interested in how technology impacts society and I knew a lot about the technology of direct marketing you know I knew all about how Sears which was the famous catalog company in the United States came rest, into being rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace. But, 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 they, but they were the first Amazon they were and yeah. like Amazon and like Amazon, they were a product of technology because right after our Civil War, the 1860s, you had this sort of industrial explosion in the U.S. And what happened? Well, number one, we had train, um, a train network that went everywhere. Very important for a country our size. You really got, you know, it's too big to, to take stagecoaches, you know. So that was a plus. We had universal postal delivery, which was assisted by the existence of the train network. Then we had true mass production you know for the first mm. time ever and then and so you put all those things together oh and then we had cheap printing which really didn't occur printing was pretty still pretty expensive up until you know the late 19th century and so you had all these things cheap printing national infrastructure for moving goods uh the ability to manufacture goods like crazy and universal postal delivery and when all those things came together it took somebody and in, in this case richard sears to say, hey, why don't we create a centralized store for the whole U.S. and and then and, and sell? You know, we will be. You know, they were based in Chicago, and they were very advanced. You know, in their technology of the time, and they basically took over the market. And uh, so I had, I had, I'd know, I was aware of that story, and I was really fascinated by it. And so when I saw uh, computers getting faster and cheaper, when I saw modems getting faster and cheaper. Uh, when I saw that people were, you know, just using computers in daily life, it had really yeah. become the norm. For instance, we have a, a comedian uh, who has a radio show named Howard Stern. I don't know if he's, he's oh, yeah. out there. In, yeah, in yeah, Howard Stern. Yeah, yeah. All right, so 
I guess, well, when I heard him talking about the, the virtues of OS2, which was an operating system and how much he loved it uh, on, on his show, he went on, on and on about that for like 20 minutes. I said, okay, personal computers are now mainstream. So when I realized, hey, PCs are mainstream, they're getting cheaper, they're getting faster, modems are getting cheaper and faster. And then the other, the last piece was the the growth of um, CompuServe and AOL mm. and these little bulletin boards. And I realized, well, these things may be weird, but people apparently like them. And if, and if a few, you know, at that time it was just a few million, if a few million people like it, maybe everyone will get to like it someday. And, and the missing link, by the way, was the web browser because the, every, every service, CompuServe, AOL, Prodigy, all the individual bulletin boards, they were all separate islands. You literally yes. had to use, Remember, you had to use your phone. You had to call in. Yeah, you had to, <laughs> you had to log in and log out of one to the other. It wasn't just a fluid transfer from one to the other. So, um, and, and, and that's when I remember I was at a computer show in, in Perth, a computer expo, and they had uh, the first disk that had Netscape Navigator on it. So I was there. I was, uh, I, I was buying my 14K modem and getting my <laughs> internet service provider, who I can't remember what it was now, but... I, I just clearly remember getting on Netscape Navigator as soon as it was available to the public, and uh, that was it. It's like, you know, a long, a long history of internet browsing ever since. <laughs> so, yeah, but, um, yeah. They, there was a fr- there, there was there was a phrase that that they don't people don't use anymore, but it really was apt, and it was called connectivity rush, right. and it was that experience, that visceral experience you had the first time you connected to. Uh, an online bulletin board or the first time you connected to the web. It, you just, it was a physical feeling like, Oh my God, you're kidding me. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I remember that so clearly. And that um, was quite a, a, a revelation to me. And, and I can certainly see someone who's got a, um, a direct marketing copywriting background like yourself. Um, then the internet is really another another ground to demonstrate the use of that knowledge of how to copyright. Uh, and it just gives you a broader base of um, access to people and a, a much more advanced way of, of doing split testing and various things that were much more difficult in the physical world of catalogs and mail outs and various things. You could do this sort of stuff uh, instantly. And I, one of the best uh, CDs. I've had a lot of CDs from you over the years from the system seminar was the Gary Benson Venger tapes. Um, I, uh, still, I still listen to those. And I think you were quite excited to, I think he was one of your, uh, for one of a better word, copywriting heroes. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Well, it just so. shows you how the world works. I, in, in 84, I was living in a tiny apartment. I mean, it's smaller than my home office. I mean, in fact, you could have fit three of my, apartments in my home office <laughs> and I read an I, and, I, and I read an article about a guy this is 84 about a guy named Gary Bensavenga who was being paid $25,000 per sales letter wow and in those days $25,000 was still a lot of money like you could buy some yeah. really nice stuff for $25,000 yeah. and what I didn't know what I didn't know was he was getting not only that was just his advance he was getting a 5 5 cent per letter royalty. So if you mailed his letter a million times, you owed him uh, oh, 50 grand or 50 grand. Fi- uh, 50 grand. Well, he had one letter that was mailed a hundred million times. Um, yeah. And, and, and so I didn't even know that part about it, but anyway, that planted a seed way back when, because I was a writer, you know, and I, and I was selling different things just to make a living. And it never occurred to me that one's sales ability and writing ability could be combined into something lucrative. I'd never heard of it before. Mm. No one ever taught me, you know? So that Gary was literally the first person, kind of like that connectivity rush uh, that made me realize, wow, there's some potential here. And then when I discovered that he was a subscriber uh, to my uh, system club service, I almost fell out of my chair, you know? And then I got to meet him and uh, we became friends and uh, he allowed me to be the only person ever in his entire career to interview yes. him for tape. Yes, yes. And yeah. uh, so, yeah, they, they, I've, got, I've got those somewhere in my office, in my, in, my, uh, in my cupboard. And I do pull them out. Actually, I think I've tr- put, transposed them onto my 
into digital onto my computer so I can listen to them. And that, that was a great, and they, yeah, there was like, oh, from memory, it was like four or five hours worth of interview. Um, and I, I and, you know, he, yeah. sorry, go, sorry. Ahead. go ahead. Well, he's so, you know, he's so just for people that don't know him, everybody who writes ad copy, and we're talking about some guys with some pretty big egos, you know, for example, Gary Halbert and, you know, it's, it's it, like all fields. There's a lot, there's a bit of ego involved. They all agree that Gary was the best. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. He, yeah. And, and for those who, who would like to get uh, in front of stuff that Gary's done, I'm not sure if he's still doing it, but marketingbullets.com is his uh, website where he's got like 38 years worth of, uh, direct copy writing stuff on there. So, um, worth going to check out. I'll put that in, in the show notes, but, but the thing is the principles of copywriting, whether it's done in a physical format, mail out letters, etc., uh, the principles apply on the internet just as much as they do in the physical sense. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And you know, the, the funny thing is there was a lot of controversy about that, or controversy? Has it, how do they say that in, in English? English, controversy or controversy? No, no, I'm, I'm um, not sure. We'll, we'll have some anyway, controversy over that. I, <laughs> I, I always, it's always funny to hear different words. Like in in, in English, we, in American English, we say massage, you know, and in and in Britain they say massage. massage. I was like yeah, massage, yeah. please. It just yeah, that's right. We say massage. Um, <laughs> yeah, but there, but there was tremendous controversy about the whole issue of could you have a long sales letter on the internet? And there were people, there were a lot of people back in the mm. early days saying, of course you can't. Of course you can't put a 20 page letter on the internet. That'll never work. Well, I think it worked. <laughs> it, yeah, it, 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 was, it, it was great because there were so many foolish things that people were saying and, and, and claiming were reality. In fact, that's been the history of the internet. I mean, I remember people even as late as 2006 who were telling me that my obsession with internet video, this was already a year after YouTube came out, you know, they were telling me, oh, it's never, it's never going to take off and nobody's going to watch a whole movie on a computer screen. That's never going to happen. <laughs> like, well, I I'll, think it's going to happen. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you credit for making me some, some money directly from, from you. I am ah. listening to you back. It was 2004 or 2005. I can't remember. I think it was 2005. And you're talking about internet video marketing or video internet marketing, one of the two. Anyway, I went and registered mm -hmm. both of those names, the dot com, Ooh. and and sold them within a year or two of registering for several thousand dollars each. So I'm that was a small fortune to me back then. Um, so thank you. I never got to say thank you to Ken for putting that in my head. So. Uh, um, yeah, I went and registered those. I think they're being sold sold again by someone else, but <laughs> that's the way the internet. Wow. Um, but yeah, look, who saw it? And then you know the the purchase of uh, YouTube by Google in two thousand and five, and now it's the well, approaching to be being the largest search engine technically on the planet outside of Google mm -hmm. Search. Uh, I know I consume probably more video hours uh, watching stuff on YouTube than I do on any commercial television channel. Um, you know, oh, yeah. second only probably to Netscape. And that was the vision that I had. Well, not the vision. It wasn't my vision, but that was probably almost the hope I had back in the, the late nineties was like far out. You know, we don't need Blockbuster and all these other video chains. Why can't we just get all these videos online now? And I'm thinking this along the same things that you were thinking. It was only a matter of time before the, the whole video and audio uh, was completely a dominant aspect of the internet. And you know, look at it now, and it's only getting more and more. So, um, so Ken, you put on the world's first internet conference. And uh, that was a success and it's been noted and, you know, lots of uh, video content of that for people to go and watch. And then you then came along your system seminar. Now, that's, some, that's how I got to know you. Like I hadn't seen these mm -hmm. videos of uh, the San Francisco conference um, until I started hearing about you from the system seminar. And the reason I heard about the system seminar was from our mutual good mate, um, <sighs> 
I'm going blank Perry Marshall. I've just had a, a mental. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I've known Perry since about 2003, I think, because we were in the same space and uh, he came down to Australia to talk at a conference uh, called the X10 seminar in, in uh, Queensland. And um, Ken Giddens was there and Alex Mandosian and a whole host of other people. Um, and, one of the things that um, he talked about was the system seminar uh, down the track when I was listening to various things and having conversations with Perry. So when did you actually start the system seminar? What was the, what was again the thought process of putting that together? Well, I had been, te- I had been putting on events starting in 94 um, and I was basically doing one a year in 95. Believe it or not, we did, I believe what was the very first conference on local advertising on the internet ever. Okay. And that, that was a weird one because everyone thought that was crazy. They were saying, wait a minute, this is the World Wide web. Why would I advertise locally? It's just, people are strange, you know, yeah, people, yeah. people just don't, <laughs> they want to, they want to say no, I don't know what their problem is, but anyway, so, so people didn't get that. So then we did another event in 96, 97, 98. And, after 98, I was in San Francisco at the time. i have been there throughout the whole 90s. I thought things were getting kind of lunatic. Um, uh, so I had a company called E-Media. Mm, uh, we had trademark. We had been, the, yeah, the, yeah, I did. Oh, I did. I owned the trademark. I owned the, the, the uh, federal trademark and I owned the domain name. And we were working on uh, internet video streaming. And I will be honest, we were not successful <laughs> uh, uh, at, at making it work. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm not the technical guy. However, um, somebody did need some of our assets. Um, so we sold the company and it mm-hmm. was good timing. Uh, we felt dumb for a while because we sold it in 99 and, and, and things just kept booming. Mm-hmm. I, I felt that it was just too hypey and too frothy and too ridiculous. So I left San Francisco, sold my company, uh, sold all my internet shares a little early um, and bought gold. (laughs) Uh, Also a little early. Um, But it turned out to be a really good trade. Uh, Because I don't know, people people may not know, but the the internet industry just just died. in um, Yeah, the dot-com bubble crash, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I had a friend that had a 140-person business. He was the top uh, PR guy for the whole internet industry, and he had his best year ever in '99. And in 2000, he was out of business. Yeah, and that and that had been a you know that was a very he was a good businessman and he had a good business, but every everybody died. It was like a a neutron. When I went back to San Francisco to visit, it it was literally like a neutron bomb had hit the city. In other words, the buildings were still standing, but all the people were gone. Yeah. Um, it, it didn't last long, but for about two or three years there, I don't know if people are aware of a, of a conference called ad tech, but yes. ad tech is a yeah. big, yeah, it's a, they almost went out of business in 2002. I mean, they were within a hair of going out of business permanently. So I felt because I'm so contrarian, I felt that, okay, I stopped teaching because people were getting lunatic and they really weren't, they were ignoring the fundamentals and they were, they didn't, well, you know what? You didn't need fundamentals. All you, could, all you need to do is be able to fog a mirror and write a business plan, and somebody would give you $10 million. I mean, that's really what the environment was like in, in 98, 99. Definitely. In yeah. Service. yeah. Well, I'll tell you how crazy it was. I, when, I, when I moved back east, I subletted my apartment to a recent brand-new college graduate who had just gotten a job at um, Yahoo, and part of his deal – it was an acquired company. He was an employee of somebody else and he got stock. He got Yahoo stock. And within a year of subletting my apartment, which was a pretty good apartment. It was in Pacific Heights, a really nice neighborhood in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. He said, Hey, Ken, I got to move out. I got to move out. I said, Oh my God, are you okay? Is everything all right? He goes, Oh no, I'm just buying a place. 22 year old guy (laughs) hasn't even worked here and he's buying and San Francisco is an expensive real estate market Mm. and he's buying, he's buying his own apartment. So I thought this is, I can't, this, this makes no sense. I'm out of here. So I moved North to the Northeast and, um, but when the market really collapsed and it, and it just fell to pieces, then people got humble again and they were willing to go back to the fundamentals. 
Uh, at which point I said, you know what, I'm going to start teaching again. Um, because they're listening. They're going to listen. I'm not, I, don't, I don't like to waste my breath, you know. So mm. they were, people were ready to like learn about testing and A-B split testing and copywriting and, you know, all that stuff. So the, the, the thing that really triggered at me and, and, and sparked me to do this was the emergence of pay-per-click. Yeah, uh, that was sort my favorite of, subject. Right? That was, <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, yeah. it, you know, now it's sort of, as common as wallpaper and we're, you know, what's so new about that? Well, it was very radically new because up yeah. until that time, there was really, other than banner ads, there was no way to buy advertising rationally on the internet. And there certainly was no way to buy it in a super targeted way. Uh, and of course, being able to buy ads on for search terms, you know, that was the beginning of some really mm. important targeting. Remember right? GoTo? So, that was the start of it. Um, exactly. Yeah. And and, and GoTo people that I mean missed that era. GoTo clicks were one fixed price, one penny a click. Yep. Yep. And then and then when they raised it to ten cents, everybody lost their mind. What? That's outrageous, <laughs> you know. Um, and then, but and you then Yahoo, have, Yahoo, Yahoo bought them out for just just on a billion dollars, I think it was, and then uh, and then changed yep. the name to of. Gone blank. Overture. Overture. Thank you. Yes. Overture? Uh, yeah. Overture. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, so you could have bought, you know, methcelioma, which is like one of the most yeah. valuable keywords, uh, for ten cents, and and people were complaining that it was too expensive. So it's just so funny how things work. So the the cool thing about pay per click that I saw was not only could you buy more or less targeted traffic, um, but you could also um, you could, I'm just, excuse me, I'm just being distracted by something. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. You could also, you could also test ideas. Yes. Quickly and inexpensively. What's the best headline? Test. <laughs> What's the best product to offer? Test. What's the best price? Test it. What's the best, you know, so that, that to me was even more exciting. Uh, what's the, by the way, what's the best book title? And that is how, um, Tim Ferriss yes, came for up our with work week. For yep. our work week. Yeah. Yep. He used that method. And he did and, indeed. Yeah. And we, that was one of the things that we introduced at the system seminar in 2002. So the system was, there literally was a system, which was one, use pay per click to, to refine your headlines, your offers, your price points, your copy, um, uh, develop a good, aggressive, uh, opt-in page, uh, which people were not doing in, in 2002. It was only the, the very sharpest, a handful of sharp practitioners mm. were really working on their opt-in process. Uh, we were also big proponents of, of sequential autoresponders like AWeber and, yep. the, and companies like that, which we started doing in 96. AWeber started in 97, and people still hadn't fully caught on. So that was another part of the system. Uh, make, make sure you have a really well-developed follow-up. And then we introduced the idea to the internet marketing world. Again, there were smart people that were doing it, but nobody was teaching it. The idea of A-B split testing. It's like, why guess? You know, when you can split test. Um, we talked about, well, we talked about long copy, which really wasn't new in 2002. But, but anyway, it was, we gave people a systematic way to go about marketing on the internet. And I think that was one of the things that really uh, lit up Perry Marshall. Yes. Uh, yeah, because, yeah. you know, yeah. So, um, and, and we were not only were, we, not only were we the only ones teaching this, but in those days we were the only ones teaching at all because everybody had thrown in the towel. Everybody had thought that the internet thing was over, you know, all the, the, the hype and the buzz and the enthusiasm was gone. Yeah. And I said, you know, I don't, I, I said, I don't really care about the hype and the enthusiasm. This is not, the internet's not going away. <laughs> it's proven itself. It's only going to get more important. And these direct marketing principles are going to be like gold for the people that understand them and use them. And so that was, that was our, our thesis. And we went out and tried to get the best uh, speakers that we could possibly get. Um, we never had a, um, you know, what they used to call pitch fests, which I guess are still the norm now. Um, yeah. I you think you're going to. 
<laughs> yeah, it's sell, selling selling hope to the hopeless was one of your coined terms that I use all the time these days, um, and yeah. that's what, that's what unfortunately what a lot of these other uh, seminars were. And they were just pitch fest, people just flogging their products uh, on stage. It's so it's yeah, so it's so wrong. Like you know, if if somebody's paying to go to a seminar and they're flying across the country or across the world, um, they're entitled to a seminar. Now, I'm not against offering things at the seminar that yeah. might, you know, help people further. But when the whole thing is designed solely to get them to do, you know, you don't give them what they really need. You give them half of it and then say, well, we've got this 10000 or $15,000 coaching program. And yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. But that, that became, unfortunately, that became the norm. Um, not for us, um, but it became the norm for most people. Most, uh, so yeah, yeah. we didn't I, do, do that. Um, <laughs> Sorry to cut you off there. That, that was one of the reasons why I flew 30 hours from Perth to Chicago to uh, to go to it because that had been my understanding from people that I'd spoken to who had been. And, of course, Perry Marshall was always talking about it very highly. So if it was good enough for Perry in my book, it was, uh, it was good enough for me. Um, and that year, this is... Um, Something else I wanted to mention while I was talking to you was uh, I introduced a, a good friend of ours who unfortunately uh, passed away last week from uh, a brain aneurysm. That's uh, James Martell. Uh, and James Martell um, hadn't heard of the system seminar in 2007. And I said, look, you, you should come along. And I'd known him for a few years and he was a good friend. And um, he then became part of your faculty in teaching uh, affiliate marketing, which was awesome, and I think he he did stuff for you from from two thousand and eight uh, up until when you ran the last one in two thousand and eleven. Is that correct? Absolutely, and uh, he would have been at our reunion uh, in yeah. Chicago too. And I will I'll forever be thankful to you, Ed, for in introducing uh, James and I to each other. Uh, he was a great man on so many levels. Um, he was just a great person, a human being bottom Absolutely. line and he was a, yeah yeah he was and, he was a good guy you know and and but but he was also a great practitioner and a great educator he and he's one of the guys he never went to this dark side of using his knowledge to take advantage of other people he was always a superb educator right up to the end absolutely right up yep. to the end yep yep his his uh, bank of knowledge that he's put out there, I mean, the, from, from my understanding, and I might be wrong, but definitely in terms of the internet marketing space, he's got the longest standing uh, podcast since 2003, Affiliate Buzz. Um, and all, uh, as far as I know, that's probably the longest standing consistently running podcast on any subject on the planet. Um, I might be mistaken about that, and uh, no, I think you. I think you. I think you're. You're right. I, I'm. I'm. You know, he's. He was looking, and I looked too, and we couldn't find any podcast that had survived as long. There might have been a few that started before his, mm. but nobody continued. But in terms of long duration and longest running and oldest r running, he did that. <laughs> James yeah. did that. That's an amazing thing. Yeah, ab absolutely. And so I, I was very fortunate to, to get to know him very well and uh, sp spent several times with him when we were in the US and also in Vancouver and we went and stayed at his house and um, met all the family. We knew Arlene well and the kids. And so, yeah, I, my heart goes out to Arlene and her family and they're going through all that uh, that process at the moment and it's just yeah he's still in shock and but look the fantastic thing he, his legacy will will live on in the work that he's put out there and uh, the principles of what he has been teaching uh, will stand the test of time I think um, you know th some of the technologies will change some of the, the the methods will change but I think the underlying uh, principles of what he's has taught will people will be finding his audios and videos in 10 years time, which is, which is quite amazing and a, and a fantastic legacy. And I'm really, I'm really glad that he went on and did stuff with you, Ken. That was, that was quite um, a pleasant thing for me it was, to see. It, 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 knowing, knowing and working with James was one of the best parts of my internet career. I mean, no, hands down, no question, uh, bright, a total bright light, uh, 
you know, I've said it before, he was a great guy. He was a great practitioner, great educator. Um, he was so thorough, you know, and, you know, he had started in life as a builder. Yeah, that's uh, right. You know, so, you know, and, you know, when you build houses, you better, you better think it through carefully or you're going to have a problem on your hands. And, and he took that same attitude, that same precision and thoroughness, uh, care. You know, he was never in a rush. You know, nice. he built he built his he built his foundations very solidly. The, th- the last thing that he was working on, uh, maybe you were a little maybe you were aware of this, and I uh, he he shared some of it with me, and I was very excited about it. The last thing he was working on was creating a really well ordered system for getting small businesses online profitably. Yes, and uh, and he had taught some people how to you know he had developed a, a, a methodology. And again, with a lot of precision, a lot of detail, you know, nothing, no, no broad strokes, you know, no, Hey, this is great. Give me money and I'll show you how to do it. No, it wasn't that he, he, he really laid out. He had a very, very well conceived system, how to, how to bring in uh, leads, how to talk to your prospects, how to, what to offer them, how to price it, what kind of services to make available, how to work with them. Uh, Mm -hmm. He had it all, he had it all thought out. Yeah, and yeah. that was going to be the that was going to be the next um, chapter in his incredible career. Because remember, he was one of the first people to teach affiliate marketing credibly and well. Yes, yeah. um, he, he he was one of the first people to teach SEO uh, well. He was a very early educator mm. in that area. Yep. In fact, somebody wrote me, and uh, and after I posted something about James and said, "Yeah, I've got to thank James. He he fed my family for five years." with the the SEO knowledge I got from him, you know? And so you multiply that by hundreds of people, probably thousands of people. And then of course his work in podcasting, he had that wonderful podcast about podcasts, which he was having a lot of fun with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcast mastery. Yeah. That's, that's, I was interviewed on that one with him as well. So that was, um, that, yeah, he's got some really good episodes on that. And he was such a good family man. You know, you could tell uh, what a great husband he was and, and what a great father he was. And, um, and he, I'll tell you, he was a great friend. A, a shining light, bright shining light in my life. Yeah. I, I, I wept. I, when I heard the news, yeah, I, I, mean. I just, I, once it settled in, I wept. I just, the loss is so, so enormous. Yeah. So I hope yeah. that people that did, I hope that people that didn't know him, um, I'm sure the thing that he would like is for people to benefit from all that great content he's produced over the years. So I don't even know how you access it, but I think a lot of it's available just for the taking. I think it, you can go to is. podcast master. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I will, I will be putting all the links to that in the, the show notes of this podcast. So uh, people can go to jamesmartell.com. They can go to uh, podcastingmastery.com. Um, they can just do a search for affiliate buzz there's 530 odd episodes of affiliate buzz and, and look, I mean, James is the reason I have been podcasting for 10 years. Um, he, uh-huh. he, he's the one that got me started. So if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be talking to you doing this right now. Uh, so there you go. Yeah. So, so thank, thank you, James. So, um, he's gone, but he will certainly never be forgotten. And, uh, he's, He's made sure of that by putting out tens of thousands of hours worth of content on the internet. Yeah, it's um, true. It's uh, true. So, so uh, yeah, rest and in you peace, visit, buddy. You, you, and, and you visited him in, 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 in his, on his home turf, which I was lucky enough to do as well. And yeah, yep. you can just see the, the guy was a great guy. You know, you, people can't hide. You know, they eventually, you know, especially if you're out there in their, na- in your, in their neighborhood with them, you pretty get a sense of who, who, the, who the person is. And, you know, I just had more admiration for him after I visited him at home than I, than I, than yeah. I, and I already had tremendous admiration for him before, but yeah. I just loved the way he lived his life and took care of his family and took care of his students. And, you know, he just took care of business. He was a, he's a model for us all, really. Yeah. Yeah. Too, too true. Too true. So, um, so you've got the, the system seminar reunion coming up and uh, there's lots of uh, people who um, have, have been through and, and gone to the system seminar over the years. Um, how many people are you expecting to turn up? And this is happening in Chicago again, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, it's in Chicago. Um, 
for various reasons, I, I put a, an arbitrary limit on it, mm-hmm. um, mainly because I didn't want to have to. I didn't want to have to think about promoting it. I just yeah. wanted to announce it, sell it out, and be done. And I figured the most motivated people would show up fast, and that's what happened. So we're we're sold out pretty much. Um, we, we're going to tape it, and we're probably going to make the tapes available because this this is going to awesome. you know this is this is the com- this is a culmination of 25 years of practice. Yes. And so I'm going to, as there's an old saying in the American South called, I'm going to let out all the dogs on this one. You know, in other words, you know, we're going to yeah. go hunting yeah. and, and I'm letting out all the dogs tonight. And, um, that's what I'm going to do in this seminar. Uh, and I have a, so it's a small group. It's 50. So there's a lucky 50 people. The first ones that jumped on, they're in everybody else. Sorry, can't come. <laughs> yeah, that's um, it. That's it. But that's fantastic. You're doing the, the the video. I'm really, really chuffed to hear that because I was sort of disappointed that I couldn't get there. Uh, so that's that's great. I'm sure you'll uh, send out something when that's available. So that's fantastic that that's happening. Now, once that's done, where are you at? What are you What are you working on at the moment? Because you've got lots of passions. I know you're into music and jazz and. Um, yep. Yeah, is that still something that takes up uh, some some of your yeah downtime? yeah and that yeah and that's just getting better and better for me um, uh, yeah I'm, I've be, you know I'm becoming a bit of a figure in the jazz world because I have one of the most visited websites in jazz and so pretty and much everybody that? in the industry what's it's the called website? jazz on it's called jazz on the tube uh, and I oh, created yes. it. Yeah, I created it way back when YouTube was new, and our simple idea at the time was to go through all the videos on YouTube and find the good jazz ones and organize them. Ah. Um, and and that really, pe- you know, because we were early and first and the biggest and the most, we we got a lot of traction, and so that's made put me kind of a, uh, in a in a good position in this industry. And and for me, you know, I I'm, I'm believe it or not, I'm going to be 60 next year. Um, I've done very well. Uh, you know, I don't really have to think about money too much. You know, I think you always have to think about money, but yeah. I don't have to sweat it. And so I'm focusing more on doing the things that I really, really want to do. And, and music is, is, is one of them. And this has become a great vehicle for me because I can talk pretty much anybody that I admire. I can usually get them on the phone. Um, and, and, you know, so all these, star, you know, people, my heroes, I get my musical heroes, I get to meet. Uh, and that's been great. I've been going to Cuba a lot, uh, which is a great, uh, yeah. great, great center of music. And I've got tremendous, I'm, I'm probably better connected in Cuba than I am in, in any other place on earth. Uh, it's a small country, um, but musically, I'm very, very well connected there. And uh, that makes me very happy, you know. And I, I still have my system club. That's a, a club of graduates. Excuse me one second. I almost made it to the end of the, the call That's without right. coughing. That's uh, fine. I, I uh, have a club of graduates, and actually it's open to anybody at this point, the systemclub.com. And I, well, I just interviewed James in April. You know, We had a whole long session on podcasting, which, which was eye-opening to me. Yes. Um, and we, we find people like that. Um, but the big thing I'm working on now just – not to go too long because I know we're coming up to the end of the, the, the time. Um, things have really changed in market tar- in target marketing. Um, yes. and I mean, dramatically. Uh, and that's what I, I, I'm kind of being lured back into the internet world by this new technology. And it is now possible uh, to target people with way more precision than we ever thought possible through something called in market uh, targeting yep. and um, Google offers it and Facebook offers it. But what people don't understand is there are independent third party vendors of this technology and it is much more favorable to go with an independent vendor and then take the data you glean from the independent vendor and use it as a currency to deal with Facebook and Google and Instagram and YouTube and so on, and not to rely on Google and Facebook because it, and now this takes us full circle. They're closed mm. shops. Yes, right? they are. And, 
Yep. And and also you have to play by their rules, no matter what you know, whatever you want to do. If you are able to get in in market um, data, which is a whole course in itself, but people should Google it and start getting familiar with it. If you can, if you have a way to get in market data independently, that frees you from being sort of a surf or a, a, you know a, a, a feudal <laughs> tenant yeah. of, of of Google or Facebook. And can you give us uh, some examples of which companies you're referring to? Well, I, this is one of my great secrets. Uh, and ah. the, there's an old saying, if, 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 if everybody knows your business, you don't have a business. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, in fact, I'm, I'm, I've become a broker uh, for one of the companies. Um, and anybody that, that, that's interested, um, basically, if you're, if you're buying lots of traffic already, um, this is something you really, really want to learn about sooner than later um, yep. because uh, I mean, we, we see people being able to uh, get, you know, two for one. In other words, what they were, they were spending a dollar to get, I mean, we use just really basic, simple, oversimplified math. They were used spending a dollar to get a lead. Now they're spending a dollar and they're getting two leads. Right. Um, yeah. That's huge. And some, and some, yeah. And sometimes getting three, four and I won't even tell you how high it goes because people will be, they won't believe me. So I'm going to stop at four, but it can go much higher. And it's all about uh, targeting with greater precision. And it's all about the data that you start with. And so that's got me buzzing. Uh, <laughs> there's an, there's an old line from uh, the movie apocalypse now or so, or no, 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 I'm sorry. It was uh, the Godfather. And uh, he goes, just when I wanted to get out, they yeah. grabbed, they pulled me back in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's and right. this, this new technology is kind of pulling me back in. So we'll see. I'm going to present it in Chicago. Uh, it's going to be on the tapes. Um, and system club members are learning about it too. And, you know, it's, it's a learning experience. It's, it's like what email marketing was like in 94. Uh, uh, okay. It's like you, know, you had to learn a lot of stuff. And there were, you know, there wasn't just, hey, there, there was no Aweber to plug into. You had to hand build everything. Uh, it's not quite as rough as it was that that was, but it's, it's not all tied up in a shiny bow. And what I'm telling people is, you know, if you're, if you have the right kind of business, um, this is something where you do want to get your hands dirty and your knuckles bloodied because you will be out of the gate years before anybody else. And that's worth money. Um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so that, that's, kind, that's, that's fantastic. Kind of so, uh, so if you want to learn more about that, the, uh, the message is by the, the system seminar reunion uh, recordings, and you'll get to learn about it. <laughs> are they are they yeah, being yeah. sold just to um, to uh, alumni who have, or is it open to anyone to buy those? No, we're gonna, we'll probably we'll probably make it available to everyone. Okay. It's sort of my 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 last well, it's not my last testament, I hope, but but it, it's it's sort of my like here's the stuff you absolutely have to know, you know, all in one package, you know. So that's the yeah, plan yeah, for yeah, the yeah. for the. Fantastic. The yeah. 80, the 80, 20 principle uh, applies um, for sure. Absolutely. And yeah, a lot of people, and look, everyone talks about social media, social media, social media, but uh, in my personal opinion, I think everyone's handed over the keys to the kingdom way too much to the Googles and the Facebooks of the world. Um, and I think we need to start getting back into control of our own traffic and where that's coming from and not relying on just these behemoths that are really wanting to have their own sort of walled garden control of, of information and data and traffic. So uh, they've done an exceptionally good job of doing that. Let's <laughs> be clear. Uh, but, right, right. But there's a lot of people who are starting to wake up to the fact that, uh, you know, when, when you have a presence on on Google and, and Facebook, you're not in control. Uh, you're really leaving it up to them, which is a dangerous, dangerous thing in my book. Oh, it's, it's, it's fatal. It's, it, you're, you're becoming a, a uh, I use the word feudal. You're becoming a serf yeah. on their plant. You're becoming a ser you know, slave on their plantation. Definitely. Why, why would you voluntarily do that? <laughs> I no. mean, use them by all means, use them. But don't be used by them. And unfortunately, the, the, the trend now is for people to hand themselves over to be subjugated by these companies. And so that, I guess that, and I hadn't really thought about that. I have to thank you. Ed. Um, I hadn't really thought about that. But that's another theme uh, 
in in the data work that I'm doing right now is you know you know to me it's just a matter of hey make more money, but but actually it's, there's even a larger issue at stake which is are you going to be uh, at the effect of Google and and Facebook or are you going to be the one moving them, mm. um, and that's yeah. really yeah. that's really you know you want to you know even if you even, you know there's a principle of in you know judo, uh, you know a little ninety pound guy can slam a 400 pound muscle bound guy right on his back. Yep. How does he do it? Knowledge and leverage. Exactly. And that's what I want to be teaching people how to, how to leverage uh, the data and, 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 and some of the new technologies uh, to make Google. This is great. You're, you're helping me develop my copy that's, for this. I appreciate that, it. That's um, my pleasure. And, you, know, <laughs> you know, making, making Google and Facebook dance to your tune, not you dancing to their tune, you you dance you make them dance to your tune and that's cleverness yes you know? ab absolutely uh and you now we have clients as we're a marketing agency we we deal with this stuff all the time and uh, it always shocks me when we we get, have a new client who comes into our sphere of influence to find out that they don't even have their own website they're leaving all of all of their business oh. it, uh, resides on facebook uh, and and, and oh. Google and one and it's terrifying. I'm going, Seriously, it really is. Yeah, because they could they, really they could turn the switch off on you for whatever reason. They you know just no one goes and reads the terms and conditions when they sign up for Facebook or their Google accounts, which are like seventy five pages <laughs> long. Uh, and in there somewhere it says if you do one tiny little thing wrong that we don't like, we're going to switch off your account. And this has happened to lots of people. So, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. We're, we're lucky that they don't. They, we're lucky they don't include in one of the terms, and we take your firstborn child. Because I mean, <laughs> they I would. Mean, they, they would if they could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And look, and I, I always talk about um, when I, I run a lot of workshops here in Perth, and and funnily enough, one of the ones I'm actually about to to launch is called Web Dojo. Uh, so it's 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 teaching people the principles of online marketing combined with martial arts because. I'd, I'd had about 15 years of experience in, in martial arts and various things. And there's going to be sort of like a, a grading, a belt system of, of what you learn. So. Oh, <laughs> I love that. I love um, it. You know, one of our, one of our, one of our best students ever, uh, Lloyd, was, Irwin. Um, Lloyd Irvin. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's, yeah. you know, and it, boy, he literally, and everybody should take a lesson from his book. We taught him AdWords uh, at 11, at 11 a.m. And at noon, he was in his room telling his his technical guy, "Get on this right now." <laughs> yeah, I, look, I was fortunate to have. He was one of the keynote speakers at the two thousand and seven uh, system seminar, and um, yeah, he was awesome. He's a, such a dude. He's he really he really did just jump straight in and apply that discipline of martial arts to everything he was doing with his business, and it was. Fast. I haven't seen much about him in recent years, but. Um, Hopefully he's still going strong. Oh, he's 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 very active in coaching um, UFC fighters, top fighters. In oh, fact, I okay. had this great experience. Yeah, I went to I went to uh, uh, Manchester, England, where he was the uh, the the trainer for uh, the guy on the title bout, and oh, so right. he invited me to come. And we, we it was a very diff wild experience. I'd never been to one of those things before. They're pretty pretty wild, and uh, we got to hang out with all the fighters and you know, get behind the scenes and see what's going on. And it's, it was, it was quite interesting. And no, he's doing very well. He's making money quietly. He's got a lot of it, very interesting uh, projects that are doing so well. He doesn't want to talk about them. Some of them. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. Doing he's really he's, well. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not out there saying this, the secret I'm going to, what does my head in is all of these, the, and this has gone on for years. Uh, you know, the secret to this and the secret to that and the, it's like, well, if it's such a secret, why are you telling everyone? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, and, right, exactly. Yeah, and if you're making so that, much money from the secret thing that you're doing, so you're saying you're not making enough money from that, so you're going to start selling the, the, the courses on it. So it's funny. Yep, yep. Oh, uh, dear, oh, dear. Well, look, uh, Ken, we could talk for hours, I'm sure, on all this sort of stuff, um, but you've got things to do, and uh, it's just gone past midnight here in Perth, so I'm... I'm going to have to go to bed soon, I think, but I'll have to come down off oh. my, my, my high of talking to you. Uh, look, it has been an honor. And um, I think when people really sort of get a grasp on 
what you've done and what you've contributed to the whole internet marketing space over the years since the uh, the, the the mid nineties, um, then I think they'll be quite impressed with your your resume of work. And yeah, uh, it's not over yet. There's still lots of stuff to uh, to come. And um, yeah, thanks for for taking the time out of your schedule to come on the Business Marketing Show. Well, thank you for introducing me to the great James Martell, and and I especially appreciate having <clears throat> having an opportunity to talk about him a little bit. So uh, I hope everybody looks into his work because it's really will it will stand the test of time. And great to chat with you again. It's been it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, yes, it has. Yeah, way way too long. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope the reunion goes very well and i look forward to uh, watching some of the videos on, on it that'd be fantastic so we'll we'll speak to you soon thanks everybody for listening and uh thanks ken for your time thank you okay bye for now you've been listening to the business marketing show you can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on itunes soundcloud and stitcher